Let's start with CAA, Combat Sports Division, Markel Martin. I was under the impression that the CAA Combat Sports Division was dissolved. So are you actually still with CAA? And obviously you mentioned Markel Martin, who's kind of gone out on his own now. And he's obviously very notable for leading the way with, with Francis Ngannou. But people forget, you know, he had a relationship with you whilst working at CAA. So what is the nature, the nature of the relationship there with Markel and with CAA? So it's still good with CAA, obviously, um, but they, they got out of the business in terms of an agency. Um, so we had multiple agents, right? Um, everyone was managing different talent. Um, you know, we had um, we had the Shevchenkos. We had uh, who were with a, a different agent. We had GSP who was with a different agent. All those all those guys. Uh, but I was always with Markel. That was my guy, um, and he had me. He had actually Kevin Lee as well. He, he still has Khalil Roundtree. So he had guys that he worked with. Um, and so when they disbanded, everyone's just, dis or, or you had a chance to actually move along as well. But some people stuck with those agents. Um, and I stuck with Markel. That's that's what I ended up doing. And so Markel's still managing me under a different umbrella. Um, but, you know, it's it's uh, we've got great relationships with CAA. And if we need to lean on them for anything, um, that's out there. As a heavyweight, as a champion, when you see, you know, what Francis Ngannou has gone through and he lands this incredible, you know, history making deal, you know, alongside the same manager that, that works with you, Markel Martin, as an observer, how do you take that in? How do you absorb that? And and what were your thoughts on everything that he's gone through over the last couple of months? I've got a lot of thoughts. You know, that was years in the making. Um, I was even with the UFC when they were, you know, kind of talking and the, the, the few, a lot of these managers are best friends with Dana or try to be best friends, like a lot of media members, my man. <laughs> and so they don't look at the, the sport, right? They're looking for themselves and they're trying to be best friends and and and, and, and get deals for themselves and, and, and that type of thing. Um, where a CAA was always different. They First of all, our guys got paid on salary, yeah, our, our agents. So you're not eating just off the athletes. So that was a huge part of me signing with them. They don't need to sell me out. They don't need to, you know, uh, do a favor for someone, and and that, that might not be my best interest. That's a, they get taken care of no matter what by the agency, and so they had a big picture view on the sport, um, and I like that aspect about it, and that really allowed me to consider this uh, the one deal, um, and you know, seeing the plans laid out for Francis for for many years. Uh, obviously, there's so many ways contractually. Fighters just don't have say or leverage or fairness. They can extend you so many different ways. They don't have to give you fights and and all that kind of stuff. So it took a long time for him to actually see it through. Um, but he got it done. And that was cool to see, you know, see the fighters get something. See, see, it's always the other, the company's always the A side, right? 99.9% .9 of the time. It was nice to see one of our guys to get it. Um, and, and it was nice to see Nate Diaz do the same thing, to be quite honest with you. Uh, any any anytime someone from our side gets it, it brings a smile to my face. Um, and and to be honest, I can't believe the guys that jumped on it. Like, oh, Francis is fumbling the bag. He's this. He's that. Are you guys crazy? This could celebrate this. This is one of yours. You know what? He fought for this. And he's fighting for his off his opponents to get paid and other other fighters to get. Well, like, what are you guys talking about? You know. Um, and to be honest, what 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 bag did he fumble? He's the highest paid heavyweight fighter that's ever been paid, number one. And you consider his boxing, what he could potentially make there. He could be the highest paid MMA fighter of all time. And the only other guy on top of him, if he doesn't get that, is, is Connor, right? So uh, fumbling what? You know what I mean? Um, and, and, more, and, and that was a part of my decision making, to be quite honest with you. Look, I, I understand there's brand value and all that. But when you're getting effed, now, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast, but when but when you get when you're taking it and you know you're taking it, I can't live with that. And that might be my bloodline. Uh, you know what I mean? As an immigrant coming over, you know, our, my family and our community dealing with what we have, I, I can't take it. You know, you understand? Like if if I, someone else is going to treat me in a better manner and is better for me, um, I'd rather take that than hey, you know, be what be more famous to be a part of these three letters. But while getting bent over, like I, that's not me, man. That's not how I roll. So, 
it was something that made a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how it worked out for Francis. I was excited about the one talk, you know, and that was a whole coming full circle and Markel's balancing both ends. It was crazy to kind of see all that. Um, but you never know down the line, you know. Uh, it's a two-fight, two- to three-fight deal he has with PFL. Let's see how it plays out. Even while he's there, like, the rest of the industry has to start making moves, whether it's co-promoting, whether it's allowing guys to pro-wrestle, whatever it is. So I'm allowed to pro-wrestle. Maybe there's a door open for down the road for something else, too. You never say never, I think. The biggest thing, I think, from the Francis Ngannou deal for someone like yourself and just any heavyweight in MMA right now is we know that he's not going to fight for the PFL this year. It'll be in 2024. But the fact that his opponent is going to get a minimum purse of $2 million, that has to have the sirens going across the industry and people trying to figure out how many fights to have left on their contract. Can they figure out a way to co-promote with the PFL to make something happen? Yeah. As someone that is a current champion for one of the major promotions, that's got to be something that you're thinking about, no? Yes and no. Uh, June 23rd, I've got a date. Uh, i got to take care of that. Without that, nothing else. Uh, it's all just talk. Um, so no in terms of that. But if we're you know, just talking, we're sitting on a podcast, yes, definitely. And I think, to be quite fair, I think that, that, that two million is if you're in-house at PFL. If we're co-promoting, we're doing this or that, there's no ceiling to that. I think that's significantly more. In terms of myself, there's no other heavyweight on the planet that could bring 800 million eyeballs, star sports to the table, being a champion with that. Uh, it would be the most watched fight of all time. You wouldn't be get those eyeballs anywhere else. Um, so, you know, it's, it's exciting for sure. Um, you know, uh, like I said, Jorgen's in town. He's a part of the PFL. And he's like, I already placed a call to race set on the day that happened. He's like, you know, um, he's like, I'll show up. They know I'll show up. I'm not going to just show up for a paycheck. I'm coming to fucking fight and, and win. So it lit a fire into his ass, I'm sure, everybody. You know, actually, one of the things we're talking about today. So I'm like, hey, if he goes to that tournament, to, like, is he waiting for after the tournament, the winner faces him? It's like, I'm not sure. Because I'm like, if not, it might be best just to lose the tournament and actually go get that fight. You know, so I don't know how they're going to play it. But, all the, you know, the guys in the PFL are definitely excited and, and talking about it. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest stories over the next couple of, well, the next 12 months. It's who is going to win the Francis Ngannou lottery because that kind of payday is just unheard of if you're not a champion. Um, so it's something to monitor for sure. I, I like what DC said. It made MMA real. It's the truth of it. We're not talking, uh, hey, the sport of UFC. Now it's MMA. Guys are making top dollar, not just some money. The absolute best money in the sport got signed outside the UFC. So, and all time, to be quite honest with you. So, um, MMA is real because of that. And I agree with DC. Thanks for watching this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. And hey, do me a favor, hit the like button, drop a comment, give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Share the video with your friends. Help me blow this whole thing up. And hey, if you really enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more conversations, more interviews, and more amazing video content coming soon.